What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie, and today I am filming this one directly after the last one. So, as you'll have noticed, if you watched my last video that I posted uh, not too long ago on my three favorite expensive pens, you'll know that I commented about how I am going to try and get a floor tripod so that I can angle my beautiful background much, much better. <laughs> because, guys, my fantasy corner fills me with so much joy. Yes, I'm a nerd. Yes, I embrace it. <laughs> I ran from it for so long and no more, no more. But that's not why you're here. You're here today because you wanna know what my favorite three fountain pens are uh, that are not very expensive. Uh, if you have not watched my other video, I, I did explain there and I will explain again here that my classification for that is 100 US dollars. Anything over 100 US dollars I put in my expensive video that I posted, uh, I believe on Monday. Anything under 100 US dollars is right here. And to be fair, I mean, one of them is just a few bucks. The other one I think is under 20 and one the other one's under 30. So, I mean, <laughs> they're pretty inexpensive. Uh, now, I know that that is subjective. Uh, some people think anything, you know, over $10 for a pen is expensive and that's totally fine. Um, that's the way that I was <laughs> when I first found fountain pens. Uh, and I kind of wish I still was because I've spent a small fortune on this hobby, <laughs> but have no fear. Let's get into it. Uh, I'm going to start with the one that you all know I'm going to say anyways. The other two I think might surprise you, but you know I'm going to talk about this one. The Caveco Sport. I mean, I had to, right? Uh, and this is actually the most expensive pen that I'm going to talk about today. <laughs> uh, and that is the beautiful Caveco Sport. Uh, I've gushed about this pen so many times, so I'm not going to get too far into it. I do have formal reviews of every pen on my channel should you decide to check them out. Uh, this is a pocket pen that when you post, it does make it a relatively full size pen. It is still on the smaller side. I specifically love this one, which is the frosted ice or frosted coconut, sorry, I think is what it's actually called. It really only wants to focus on my face. Um, the frosted coconut finish. This has a fine nib. I very much like putting Diamine Polar Glow in here, uh, especially in the winter, which I just did a video a couple weeks ago, last week. Guys, I'm losing track of time, uh, where I talked about my top three pen and ink combinations uh, for the winter of 2022 slash three. It's hard because it starts in 22, goes into 23. But anyways, this is the one that I talked about with Diamond Polar Glow. Um, I just love the feel of them. I love the weight of them. Uh, I love that you can just kind of toss it in your pocket and be good to go. I love the way that this writes. I have modified it to be slightly wetter, um, but this one did come already pretty good. I have a weird like thing. I just love the way that that sounds. It's a strange thing, but I adore it. Um, and this one has just weaseled its way <laughs> into my heart. Uh, and it sits comfortably there. I don't think it will ever change. Um, I am probably gonna sell a bunch of my Cavecos just because I have far too many and think I'm sitting around like 15 or 16. Um, but there's a few that I'm gonna hang on to and specifically this one. Specifically this one, I don't think I will ever sell ever <laughs> because it's just dynamite. But there's just, oh, I just, I just love it. I just love it. Oh, I got cute aggression. I just want to squeeze it. All right. <laughs> Let's move on, shall we? Um, the next pen is totally random. Uh, I did kind of judge it a little bit because it looks ridiculous. But I was blown away when I inked it up and wrote with it. Uh, it is not one that I use very often. And you'll know as soon as you see it why. And I bought it because it was only a few dollars and I was already placing an order. So it was an afterthought. I just threw it into my cart and went, huh, that ain't bad. Well, dang. 
and that is the Jinhao shark pen. Uh, I forget the actual number uh, of this, but I really like it. It looks freaking ridiculous because it's a shark, but it writes really, really well. Um, it's screw top, take off the little shark's head, and you get a little... I'll get my face out of the way here. Come on, you can do it. I believe in you. <laughs> you get a little like hooded nib almost type thing. Why will this not focus? Is it because the nib is so small? Probably. I don't know. My camera's being weird. It is the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest little nib. And I mean, it writes really smooth, pretty wet. It comes with the converter. Now it's like a basic, you know, know nothing converter, but it's standard international. So you can use one that you already have. Although to be fair, uh, the cost of a standard international is like four times the amount of this actual pen. But if you already have one, then cool. It does have a bit of a triangle grip. So some people, especially if you don't like the Lamy for that, you may not like it, but if it fits, fits really well in my hand. Like I said, it looks ridiculous. I don't take it anywhere because I don't want to take a shark pen <laughs> uh, anywhere because it's a shark pen. But I really like this to try out inks that potentially may stain or damage the pen because it's not expensive. Uh, so, you know, when I was trying out like uh, Twisby, I had Twisby Blue Black, I think. It's a permanent ink uh, and permanent inks sometimes uh, give me issues. This did not, by the way. It handled it like a champ. And I just, I think it's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, how many times can I say that? But it, it, it blew me away. It blew me away with the way that it wrote. So it is one of my favorite cheap less expensive, inexpensive, however you want to classify it, fountain pens. So those two, 10 out of 10 recommend. And then this last one is probably the same size, same width of the other two combined. And I posted about this uh, over the month of December when I was posting a video every Monday through Friday, which was a lot of content. <laughs> Um, and I believe I called it the most important fountain pen you'll ever buy or something to that effect. And I stand by that. Um, and it is basically Mont Blanc 149 uh, dupe. And that is the Jinhao, yes, there's two Jinhaos, Jinhao X 159. Uh, you can get a Jinhao 159 that is an all metal body, uh, but it, I, and I had it. I actually had the yellow one, uh, but it's just so heavy. <laughs> I never used it, and eventually I sold it. Uh, and this is basically the same thing, but resin. So that's why it's called the X159. But regardless, it's pretty much still the 149, like Mont Blanc 149 replacement, uh, but with a plastic, you know, everything. Uh, like I said, I won't get into super crazy details. You can watch that video if you want to know exactly. Got a number eight size nib, so it's huge. <laughs> it's like monstrosity size. It just has the Jinhao like horse logo on it. This is a fine nib. Come on, you can focus. Anyway, I said at the time that you could only get black. Uh, since I've been corrected many, many, many times on that video, <laughs> that you could get other colors. Um, I could only get black and I only saw black when I was looking, but I have since seen on uh, gray market sites, so like Amazon, uh, different colors. So you're more than welcome to check that out. Um, plastic feed, like I said, number eight size steel nib. It writes really well. Like this is probably one of the best writing pens I have. It's shocking. <laughs> uh, and again, for such an inexpensive pen, it comes with Jin Hao's version of a standard international converter. Uh, so I really like that. Where did the body roll to? There it went. <laughs> um, and I think it's the perfect thing to try if you want to know what an oversized fountain pen would feel like uh, without spending, you know, a thousand plus dollars to try it out. Uh, and it writes really well. 
Uh, and the reason why I like this is because it's the only pen that I have that's like this size, this brick of a pen. So sometimes when I want something meaty, this is what I go for. If I want a really big nib, this is what I go for. Um, and to be fair, I'm just so shocked by all three of them. The one that I use the most out of these three is definitely the Caveco. Um, both Gin House I use significantly less often, but when I do, I, I reach for them specifically, uh, and I'm very always happy when I do. Uh, and I don't ever really plan on letting them go, unless, you know, I damage the, the shark by putting in an ink that destroys it. But that's yet to have happened thus far. <laughs> So who knows? Uh, but these are the three that I chose. Let me know in the comments down below what your uh, least expensive fountain pen favorites are. Uh, I'm curious to know if they're the same, different. Uh, I'm just, I, I just want to know. I'm curious. While you're in the comments section, uh, don't forget to check out the description. You'll find a link to my Patreon account if you want to help support me in what I do. Uh, also hit that like button because man, oh man, oh man. Have I learned recently that that drastically changes the algorithm uh, and really helps out the channel a ton? My goal is by the end of the year to get to 20,000 subscribers for no reason in particular other than I think it would be dope. <laughs> but if you're still watching almost 12 minutes in, you are the reason that I make these videos. Uh, hit the subscribe if you haven't yet. New videos every Monday and Friday. But as always, I will see you next time. Bye. Big, big, big thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon. These members are my VIPs and above, but regardless of where you are, I appreciate you so much if you help support me and what I do here.